Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, November 6th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, we're watching Tropical Depression Zeta, and this remains a large system that has not consolidated a whole lot today, but it has moved farther off of Central America and is now starting to shift northeastward across the Caribbean. This is the visible satellite picture as the sun sets here, transitioning to infrared at the end. And it's uh, still kind of hard to see the surface flow, but the data we have indicates that we have a large elliptical-ish circulating region, roughly. We have a center of lowest pressure somewhere in here, perhaps now starting to move northeastward along with this thunderstorm clump here. Uh, but what this really consists of is a very broad, weakly defined area of low pressure and then a surface trough that extends to the east from that. We kind of have southwesterly flow here and then easterly or uh, east southeasterly flow on this north side. And so there's kind of a convergence zone in here, which is why we're getting this uh, zone of strong convection between the Yucatan Peninsula and Jamaica. And it's likely that there are multiple uh, centers of vorticity here, or spin. And if we look at the recon data from earlier, the flight a couple hours before this recording had the plane flying around. It found a little bit of a, a spin maximum there. It also found some rotation over here earlier on, and generally a broad but poorly de defined region of rotation in this part of the Caribbean. That's Belize here on the western side in the coast of Honduras at the bottom. So a weakly defined circulating region, but we've also seen a, a likelihood that there's some spin out here as well on the eastern side. So kind of a broad region with multiple areas of rotation at the moment. In general, this is all being forced by the existence of a strong upper level trough to the northwest in combination with Ada's remnants, or I shouldn't say remnants, it's been a tropical depression the whole time, but it's been a poorly defined one. We have a strong upper level low over the Gulf of Mexico right now, and so you can see a lot of this southwesterly flow currently moving uh, along with these cirrus clouds over the Yucatan Peninsula, Cuba, Florida, and the advancement of this trough gradually toward the east is forcing through bare clinic means a lot of convection on the southeastern flank as they typically do over the northwestern caribbean and this is over a very large region and that's one of the reasons this is so messy now this entire uh, area of low level circulation is starting the process of translating northeastward because all the southwesterly flow ahead of the trough does extend down to the mid levels of the atmosphere and it's starting to steer all of this off toward cuba what we're waiting to see is how this ends up consolidating into something more more representative of what you would expect a tropical storm to be like a well-defined more or less circular circulation of air and it's possible that the little areas of spin here and here will both kind of translate northeastward together and then end up combining somehow we might see this one maybe jump under the other one and maybe they get merged together once it gets near or north of the Cayman Islands. We're waiting to see exactly how that transpires, but we have a very good idea that somehow, some way, this mess is going to end up near the island of Cuba by tomorrow or somewhere around there and will be better defined by that time. We can see this happen on the uh, GFS model. We look at the mid-level moisture field here, we'll see the broad, the broad low, the black isobar here outlines the area of circulation in the lower levels. And the wind barbs here are mid-level winds, so you can see the broad area of rotation in the mid-levels as well. And as this moves forward, you'll see that by Saturday afternoon, we do have a better defined area of low pressure, multiple closed black contours here near the Cayman Islands south of Cuba. This has been very consistent on most modeling and virtually every model run expects this to occur. But simultaneous with this, again, we have this upper level trough to deal with. This is coming into the Gulf of Mexico, and by that same time on Saturday afternoon, you can see it digging in uh, much closer to the storm than it is now, reaching toward Cuba as the storm itself approaches Cuba. And as I've been mentioning, uh, what this does is impart uh, wind shear over the vortex even more than is occurring now, and also punches in dry air because on the back side, this northwest flow is almost always associated with sinking dry air. And we can see that on the moisture plot, this tongue of brown and gray moving in toward the storm center. And if this dry air moves over the top of the circulation, that's going to destroy the thunderstorm activity near the center. Now there's going to be thunderstorms on the northeast side here no matter what, 
because there's a lot of warm advection here and the trough is still forcing a lot of ascent on this side. But if the thunderstorms leave the center of the circulation, this will start looking not as tropical-like and more like a comma-shaped cloud of precipitation around a dry circulation center. If that happens, this would resemble more of a subtropical storm than a tropical storm. But more importantly, it could uh, matter for impacts farther to the north because as this now crosses Cuba and moves into potentially the Bahamas, South Florida area, whether or not thunderstorms exist at the center will determine how strong the wind and surf is at the coastline. If we continue forward on this forecast, what this uh, evolution will consist of is this trough and the storm becoming very entangled together. And during this time, the storm will move up and eventually move underneath the upper level trough. You can see this pocket that the upper trough creates. The storm moves underneath of that. Now during this time, wind shear will decrease. And this is the moment right here uh, when it's just moving underneath the trough axis when divergence to the north is maximized and wind shear is getting lower and at this time is when we're going to be watching very carefully for whether an inner core of thunderstorm activity exists this would be the best moment where that's most likely to happen after this merger though underneath the trough this is now going to potentially wrap in more of that dry air that was uh, coming around from the western side and I can show you how that works here. First the dry air comes in from the west but then it takes time to wrap around so you'll kind of see hints of this say, say right here it starts to wrap around the east and then eventually north side. Now at this point here on the GFS or any other model there could be a thunderstorm core here with dry air on the south side or the dry air could get closer to the storm center, erode the core, and we only have precipitation on the north side more or less, and it would be weaker in terms of wind. Those are the two possibilities here, and so there's a range of potential intensities of this system near South Florida, which is where it's generally expected to be, and it will depend very much on how it looks near Cuba. That's not something we know yet, considering the storm has not consolidated from the broad mess that it is now. Now, after it merges with the trough, even uh, the track here is uh, a little irritating in the sense that this storm could be around for a while. This is the European Ensemble mean for Saturday showing where the storm is and the upper level low that is moving toward it. These two again will interact and merge together. And by the time that happens in the vicinity of the Florida Keys, South Florida, somewhere in there, uh, we've got this big ridge to the north of it here and there's no big jet stream. The jet stream is way up here. Uh, pointing across the Great Plains and so there's no real steering current to move this around and so this could be around for a couple of days drifting near or over South Florida or the Florida Keys or the eastern Gulf of Mexico so this is something that could provide heavy rain over a wide area for quite a length of time and flash flooding may be a concern here even if the winds don't end up particularly strong along with the potential for storm surge along the coast and flooding because of the persistent wind. And that's something we're gonna be dealing with no matter what likely in the Bahamas and South Florida. The storm might be here or a little farther west, but either way, it's rather large uh, right now. So this belt of easterly flow onshore is going to be present over a wide area regardless of where the exact center of the storm is. And so we are expecting those winds high surf and rain coming uh, for the region, uh, no matter what the exact evolution is. This is the NHC forecast for now, showing that movement on Saturday, getting into the area south of Cuba near the Cayman Islands, places like Jamaica, the Caymans, Cuba, all expecting rain here over the next couple of days, and then a gradual turn to the to the left, to, toward the west as it interacts with the upper level low. You can see that it's uh, south of the Florida Keys here, on uh, midnight Monday and then getting into Monday afternoon, it hasn't moved all that much. And then even by Tuesday, it's still close enough to be bringing that strong, moist uh, east easterly flow through the Bahamas and Florida region. So again, prolonged period of disturbed weather here is possible. Currently, NHC forecasts maximum winds of 65 miles per hour here. Again, that does have a plus or minus on that. Of course, it always does. But in this particular situation, we know that there's a possibility for an inner core to form or not. Uh, if it doesn't, then, you know, winds might only be 50, 60 miles an hour at a maximum with the storm. Uh, but if it does form an inner core, we could see a chance of it attaining hurricane status and winds could get as high as, say, 80 miles an hour. So we're probably talking about somewhere in that ballpark, 60, 80, 60 to 80 mile per hour winds. But in this kind of situation with a broad sloppy system under shear and baroclinic influence, uh, we're not expecting some kind of, you know, major hurricane with winds greater than 100 miles per hour to form here and move into Florida. That's not really 
a likely solution in this case, but it could still bring uh, some dangerous conditions. And we have tropical storm warnings and watches for Cuba. We'll probably have them at some point for the Bahamas and South Florida as well as we go through the next day or so. And uh, nasty weather is on the way, so get prepared and have a plan. It's November, but the hurricane season is not over yet. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.